In the next 10 minutes, I will give you a brief overview of the International 1020 system for the placement of EEG electrodes. Let's start with a simple figure. This is the nose of this patient. This is the left ear and this is the right ear. So you have the nasion here. Nasion is the junction between the bridge of the nose and the forehead. You identify the two preauricular points. These are right in front of the tragus in, fr in front of each ear and you identified a bony landmark called Inion just somewhere around here. Okay, with those landmarks let's draw some lines, let's connect some lines here. So I will use the brown color. We'll connect the nasion to the Inion. So that's the first measurement that you do when starting to put the electrodes. The measurement from nasion to the Indian is taken and the midpoint between these two landmarks is placed here. So you just put a drawing here and we will later uh, learn about that, that this is the point where you put the CZ electrode. You measure 10% from the nasion. So first you measure this whole length and 10% then uh, you calculate 10% of this length and put a mark here okay and another 10% and you put a mark here I'm putting these approximation approximate marks so these are not exactly calculated and then you calculate the distance between this point and this point this and you put a mark here and between these two you cut it at this midpoint. Let so when you measure 10% from the nation and put the mark here, this is a bone this is a landmark called FPZ. You do not put an electrode here for EEG measurements, but this is a landmark to calculate for the points. And 10% from the Indian you have what we call OZ. Again this is more for landmarks you don't necessarily put an electrode here. The distance between the e equidistance between FPZ on OZ you have the CZ here and between CZ and FPZ you have FZ between CZ and OZ you have PZ. Okay, Then you draw the second line. So we'll take a second line we'll use the brown color and we'll draw this line from the two preauricular points passing through CZ so it should pass through CZ and the preauricular points are labeled as A1 and A2 so you have A1 here and this is A2. A stands for auricular which means pertaining to the ear. Then you use you measure the distance between the two preauricular points calculate 10% of this distance and put a mark here at 10% so this is this area is 10% approximately 10% of the two preauricular points and likewise you draw another line here at 10% then you calculate the distance between this point and CZ and put a mark here and calculate between this and this and you put another mark here okay so what do what do those points represent so on the left side we have this point is T3 this point is T4 this is C3 and this is C4. So quick CZ bisects these two lines. Okay, step number two. Now we'll calculate, we'll measure the head circumference. So you start from FPZ, 
you go through in a circle, cross the T3, continue the circle, cross OZ, and then continue to cross T4, and then go all the way to FPZ. Okay. Now you've bis you've bisected this line, which you had drawn between the pre-auricular points. So this confirms the position of T4 and T3. So let's put some electrodes there. So you have to do some more measurements now. So the next step is after you've calculated this circumference, you measured 5% of the circumference from the midpoint of FPZ, put a mark here, another 5% here. Between T3 and this mark, you put a second mark. And likewise, between after, from OZ, you calculate 5% of the circumference and measure, put marks here. So 5% is the 5% of this whole circumference that you have here. Okay? So you put those marks there and then bisect between T3 and this mark and between T4 and this mark here. Write one more thing here. So you also have this point is O1 and this point is O2. Now we have to fill in a few more electrodes, so we measure the distance between FP1 to O1, but passing through C3. So you go from C3 and terminate at O1. And likewise, you start from FP2, measure through C4 all the way to O2. Now this confirms the position, the location of C3, so we'll put an electrode here, so you have the C3, you have the C4. So the distance between FP1 and F3, if you calculate the exact point between these two, you get F3, and the exact point between FP2 and C4 gives you F4. And likewise, when you, let me just use a different pencil here, when you measure the distan distance between C3 and O1, you get P3, and between C4 and O2, you get P4. Then you do some transverse measurements. What you do is, you draw a line from F7 to F8, crossing through FZ, and now you have confirmed locations of few electrodes, so you have now this here. Okay, so you have F3 and you have F4. Okay, then you draw a line from T5 to T6, but crossing through PZ. So this is approximately the line that you'll draw here. And it should cut and intersect this point for P3 and P4. This P3 and P4. And this confirms the location of PZ. This confirms the location of FZ. You already have the F7 here. I have F8 here, you have the FP1 in this location, and FP2 on this location. We have T5 here, we have T6 here, O1 is here, and O2 is here. So you have a set of 21 electrodes that are placed more or less in a standardized way across the scalp.